The Lord bless you, saints of the Most High God. I greet you another time and welcome you to another Bible study. We are moving at this time to try to close off on the series that we have been on for a couple of weeks well, Walking in the Word. It is so very important for us to understand how serious it is, uh, how serious we must take the matter of reading, studying, meditating on the Word of God. It means so much, practically everything to the child of God. And so we have been going through slowly, systematically, and we have been looking at some areas that many saints were unaware of in terms of the deeper meaning of some of the scriptures that are there and are going through is simply to inform us so that we can be clear, we can be firm in our minds that when it comes on to the words of Almighty God, they mean so much to us and we must embrace that if we are going to grow if we are going to advance in the kingdom if we are going to become the kind of people that almighty god desire us to become then we are clear in our minds that it is going to happen only when we begin to see the word of god for what it really is. At the very outset of this series, we indicated that God honors his word above his very name. And as we go through, as we went through the presentation over the weeks, it was clear how important, how potent the words of Almighty God actually is. And we are seeing that it means everything to him and it means everything to us. And because it means so much to him, it indicates and it highlights how serious we must take the words of Almighty God. We must embrace the word, we must love the word, we must read the word, we must meditate on the word, and we must then act on the word. And part of the action is our confessing. And when I say confess, I mean speak the words of God into our situations, these things that we are engulfed in, the thoughts that will be injected in our minds, the circumstances that will come and in which we will find ourselves. There is absolutely nothing that can come to us in terms of temptation, in terms of a circumstance or a situation that will uh, bring to us a particular kind of temptation. There is nothing that can come our way that we cannot find an answer to from the words of Almighty God. And this is why we are making the point. This is why I am riveting this particular thing that we must read the word, we must study the word, we must meditate on the word because in this book are the very things that will give us the victory over any and every circumstance and it is important that we understand that and so we had gone through quite a number of things and we are at the point now where we want to look at meditating on and uh, confessing or speaking the word because you recall and we will do a quick review of that in a little while but you recall that we when we last met we looked at the word 
two edges. The Bible spoke of the sword with two edges. And Paul in Ephesians chapter 6 and about verse 17 spoke about the two-edged sword, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And we see in other scriptures, in Revelation 1, in Revelation 2 verse 12, Revelation 1 16, Revelation 2 12, in Hebrews chapter 4 we, verse 12, we realize that the Bible on occasion spoke about the two-edged sword. And we gave an explanation. We went back into the Greek to look at the word dikomos, which speaks to two-edged sword. And we see in the original, it was talking about a two-mouth sword, a sword with two mouths. And clearly, we know one of the mouth was the mouth of God because it came from his mouth. And one of the mouths certainly is our mouth as saints of God when we speak the word. And so when the word which has already come out of the mouth of God and then now comes out of our mouth, that word, that sword with the two edges can do great damage to the adversary. And it's a concept that I want us to grasp as children of God so that we can understand and we can appreciate the power of the word. The word as it is that we have from the mouth of God which is in the book and the word when it saturates our being and we can then confess it, speak it in and for any situation and circumstance that we will come upon. And so this is how this word with its two edges can address anything that comes to us and understand that the two-edged sword, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And Paul, in making reference to the word of God, when he described it as a sword with two edges, he used the very same term that described the sword that the Roman soldiers used. It was the same sword that they used that had two edges and that spike at the top or that indent at the top that caused so much damage to the enemies of Rome. When they used that sword and pushed it into the uh, bowels of the enemy soldier, all that that Roman soldier did was turn it and then pull out. And he pulled out the entrails all that inner part of that attacking enemy soldier. Paul used the same word, the Macaria sword. The same word, Macaria. That Greek word is what Paul used to describe the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. He was saying then that it had two edges. And he was saying that the same destructive work that that sword did to the enemy is the same destruction that we can place upon the enemy of our soul, who is Satan and his minions. And so it is important that we understand, that we grasp the concept of the importance of the word. It is our weapon of offense, the word of God, the sword of the spirit, and we must use it. And we can only use it if we have it. And if how are we going to have it? By reading, by studying, by meditating, by confessing, speaking the word. And when we do that, we literally stuck, stick, push our sword into the very heart of the enemy and cause him to pull away for a while because he would have been discomfited by our use of the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Almighty God. And so we had gone through that. And I want to pick up on that as we move on this evening to try to wrap up on some things and to bring home some additional points so that we can see the importance 
importance, the critical importance of digging into the word, of getting into the word, of having the word of God dwelling richly in us. I say tonight again that if we fail to read, we won't have what it is to meditate on. If we fail to read, we won't have dwelling inside of us the word of God richly. We won't have what God is going to need to pull a word, to give us a ream of word, to address circumstances and situations in which we will find ourselves. God has given us this book which represents his word in writing so that we can have it and we can have it to use it to the pulling down, to the tearing down, to the mashing up of the system of the adversary. Many of God's people today are living substandard lives. We are living below our privileges. Yes, we are constantly on the run. We are not overcoming as we ought because we failed to see the importance of reading and absorbing, of studying and meditating and speaking, confessing the word. It is a critical part of the warfare that you and I are in as saints of the Most High God. We ignore the word to our peril. We ignore the word to our defeat. And we need to be very clear. We need to understand the concepts that we have been presenting. And we need to embrace it. And we need to live it so that we can overcome in this battle that Jesus already fought and got a victory for us way back there nearly 2,000 years ago. But we have a role to play and we must play to the best of our abilities. Folks that are constantly uh, falling by the wayside, folks, and when I say folks, I'm talking about Christian people that are constantly falling and falling and getting up and falling and this will happen. But at the same time, we must recognize that there has to be growth. There has to be development. And if that is absent, it is indicating and speaking clearly to the fact that there is an absence of the word of God in our lives. And we are moving to change that for every saint of God. I would like us to understand that this move that we have embarked on didn't just come like that. I know that there are folks that just don't read their Bibles. If we are going to make it in this warfare, we start one aspect of the struggle by reading clearly the words of Almighty God. When we read, we start thereafter to develop a love for the word. And so my intention was to get the entire church or as many that make up our body as possible to together so that the, those that are strong, we are going to bear up the weak. And what we are going to do and what we have embarked on is to get everybody into reading the word. There is a next phase coming, brothers and sisters. Don't worry. But the key thing is to push to together read the word. I appeal to the saints of the Most High God again. I appeal to those that have been saved even for a day and those that have been saved for over 30 years. I appeal to the young people, to the elders in our assembly, to those in between. Let's do this thing together. We are in the book of Psalms. It is not by chance that we have started this journey with the book of the Psalms. And I am encouraging us since Sunday and today is Wednesday. If you have not started, get on board. There is something to what is happening. 
And I recall when the children of Israel was instructed when they were gearing up to leave the night when the death angel was passing over. They were instructed that they were to gird their loins and to put on their clothes and to listen, stand up and eat and get ready to go. And in every house in Israel, at a particular moment, they started to eat and they were getting ready to step out of Egypt and journey to the promised land. There is something about doing some things together. Even though some folks might not understand what's happening, they will catch on. The, 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 the power of unity, the power of togetherness, yeah, the power of being on one accord. Everybody will catch on. Everybody will catch the vision. And I believe together we are going to find that a lot of our saints start to develop a love for the word. Start to develop a, an attitude, an aptitude to want more of the word. And as we read, then we are going to want to study to get more. And as we study, as we read and as we study, we are going to sit back and meditate on the word. And as we do that, then we are going to be emboldened. And after a while, we are going to then want to move to speak, to confess the word so that we are in a situation where Satan tell you that you are going to fail and you will never make it. You will have the word deep down in the reservoir of your soul that just jumps at you because the Holy Ghost will quicken you. And that word then becomes a Rima word and God rest it into your spirit, into your soul, into your mind. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, so that there will come alive in our lives, in our system, a word for every occasion, for every temptation, for every situation. And we are going to find that we can be overcomers because we dare to make the first step to start to read the word. And so I encourage every saint to get into the groove and let's read the word together. Those that did not read before, those that were not in the habit of reading the word, we are going to do this together so that every child of God will read the word and will be blessed therefrom and will, will then advance and grow and learn to fight and learn to move and to advance and to be victorious in this warfare that you and I are in, saints of the Most High God. So I, I, I ask us to take the challenge seriously and do the reading because in a little while we are going to do some meditating on some of these very words. And I'm going to share with us what meditating is all about so that we can not only read, but after a while we start to meditate and to digest and let the word become alive in our lives so that we can learn how to fight. Did, uh, David prayed and asked God to teach my fingers to fight because he was in warfare. He was constantly at war and he had to know to fight and he had to ask God to help him. And God will help us and teach us to fight, but we must first have the weapon, the weapon of offense, so that we can fight and push and stab and cut and slice. And that weapon is the word of God, and it is important that we understand that. Having said this, I want to take us over to the slides because I want to run through a few things that will bring some more light and that will bring some more clarity and that would en will enlighten us some more as it relates to the word so that we can see and we can understand we can be clear as to the word its importance its impact and how it will help us 
to be victorious in this spiritual warfare that we are in. So join me on the slide right now as we continue to go through the word. And brothers and sisters, we can see <clears throat> why it is so important to meditate on the word of God and why it is vital for us to also confess or speak the word with your mouth. I say this because uh, we speak about the two-edged sword. Yes, we speak that the, the sword has two edges. And we, as we said earlier on, the Lord spoke first. And his word was here. But then as we look at the term two-edged sword, we see from the Greek, and we made mention um, a, a short while ago, that the word that was used for two-edged, yes, was this distomos. And it's a, it's a Greek word that means two-mouth. Die means two and stomos means mouth so in the original it spoke of the two mouth or two mouthed sword of course when it says two edge it is still quite correct because they are sharp and they are two side it is two sides that are sharpened and whether two mouthed or two edge it had the potential to totally um, cause mayhem and destruction and and, and terrible damage to the enemy and so uh, those two mouths we said one was the mouth of God and one was the mouth of man so it seems as if when it speaks about two edge or two mouth that word becomes powerful because by itself it is the word of God God spoke it and so God used his mouth but God also expects us to speak it and we must also use our mouth so the mouth of God was one mouth. The mouth of man was the other mouth. And it is simply saying God has already spoken the word and it is there and it is unchangeable. And so that sharpened one side of the thing and it is just there for us. When we use the word of God and confess it and speak it, we are almost as if we are adding the other blade, sharpening the other side. And so from the mouth of God, and from the mouth of man, when we use the word, it caused significant, serious damage in the heavenlies, in the spiritual battle that you and I are in. And so it is so very important that we understand. Reading the word, God spoke it already from his mouth. It is in the book and we need to read that word. And then there is the other part that we, as children of God, having read the words and have the words dwelling richly within us, and it being a part of our being, we are then in a position to speak the word or to confess the word. And that is so very important. Now, having said that, I want to take us to... A simple outline of meditation and confession it is one thing to read the word and that is the first step and it is a very important first step it is a crucial and critical first step when we read the word right we must understand that we cannot have the word dwelling in us richly if we don't read the word and so i encourage every saint of god to read the word but then having read the word we come to a point and i'm just going through brothers and sisters so that we can understand how the word fits together all the aspects of the word we must read the word 
But then there is another aspect of the word that I want us to be very clear on. And it is meditating on the word. It is important that we understand and grasp that concept of meditating right on the word of God. If we <clears throat> meditate on God's word, we allow the word to do its marvelous work in our lives. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 tells us, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And of course it goes on and we know. But the point I want to make is that if the word of God is going to impact our lives in a powerful and sharp way, then there are some critical things, brothers and sisters, that we must be aware of. There are some critical things that we must know. And I start by saying we must understand that meditating on God's word, separate and apart from reading it, meditating on God's word is very, very very important. The question is, what is meditation? What does it mean to meditate on the word of God? Well, let me just briefly talk to us about meditation. To meditate is to think deeply about what God has said to us in the word the particular word that we just read from the Bible, and to prepare our minds and our hearts to then go into prayer so that we read a word from Psalm, we, the Psalms. We read a word from anywhere in the Scripture. There are some questions, probably a question or two, that immediately we should uh, be asking ourselves, what is God saying here? What is it that he's saying to me? And so meditation is us stepping back, getting into a quiet place. I urge every saint of God, and we're, we're taking it from foundation, every one of us, it is important that we have a place or a point where we can pull back from the distractions of the world, the music, the television, the radio, the computer, the telephone. We must have a point where we pull away from every distraction. Yes? And we take some time having read a chapter to sit back and look closely at that chapter. We sit back and we examine that chapter. It could be two chapters, it could be just even a verse. Because sometimes we read one verse and that verse is loaded with things and we can sit back just to think about what God is saying in that verse. It says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And in this one little verse, we can sit back and start to deeply think about what God is saying in this particular verse. And so when we start to do that and start to meditate, a couple of things happen when we engage in the process of pulling back, stepping back putting aside all distractions, and then focus on a particular verse or chapter or chapters that we have just read. When we start to meditate, we become focused. When we start to meditate, it literally leads us into worship. When we start to meditate, it makes it easier for us and better able to apply the words of God to our very 
own lives. So we are talking about meditating, but I'm telling us that it is not just something that crop up from a teacher or a preacher. It is a principle in scripture. And so if we look at Psalm 119 and verse 15, right, we see where meditation leads to focus. It, it leads to fixity of purpose. Uh, here it is that it was David that was writing in the psalm, Psalm 119 and verse 15. And it's, he simply said, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes. That word fix simply means focus. Focus my eyes on your ways. And that is so very important. important. If we are going to be serious about the word, we have got to first read and then saints of the most high God, we then move to meditate, to think on what is in the word. So David said, I will meditate on your words. I will meditate on your precepts. And in doing that, my eyes will be fixed or will be focused on your ways. The principle of meditation is right there in Scripture, saints of the Most High God. And in going into walking in the Word, we are talking about reading. But not just reading the Word, but here we are going into meditating on the word of Almighty God. By meditating, by thinking deeply about what God is saying, by pulling back out of the distractions, by putting aside the computer and the phone and the television and the radio and everything else, and being locked away in God, folk, it, it literally focuses us on the word. And that, my brother and sister, pushes us to understand, to grasp more, and to be more focused on the words of Almighty God. But then, meditation also literally, saints of God, lead to worship. It was Psalm 1, on, Psalm 1, I'm sorry, and verse 2. Psalm 1 and verse 2. And it says, and I start in part, but... His delight is in the law of the Lord. But his delight is in the word of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. The more we meditate on the word, the more we delight in the word, the more we meditate on the word the more we meditate in the word the more it becomes delightful to read and as we start to delight in the word it literally propels us to worship the Lord God Almighty so the more we meditate on the word the more our hearts will be inclined, brothers and sisters, to worship. And so we are talking again about meditation, meditating on the word. And then thirdly, thirdly, we medit as we meditate on the word, it somehow better enables us to understand how to apply the word of God to our lives. It is one thing to read. And when we read, there's a lot of things. It is loaded with benefits by just to read the word of God. But we are not just going to read and stay there. We are going to move on and meditate. And as we meditate on the word, Think deeply about it. 
ask ourselves the questions, you know, what do I need to know from what God is saying here? What do I need to do from what God is saying? As we start to meditate and look at the questions and think deeply and try to see what is being said, what starts to happen? One, we said it earlier, it helps us to become more focused on the word. Two, it helps and lead us to worship the one who gave us the word. And three, we are seeing now where we are better able to apply the words of God to our lives. And the Bible tells us in the book of Joshua, chapter number 1 and verse 8, it says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it. So here, again, we are seeing right from Scripture. We saw first from Psalm 119 and verse 5, meditate on its precepts. And in other words, meditate on the word and fix my eyes on your way. As we meditate, we, our eyes will be fixed or focused. Yes. Then we saw in Psalm 1 verse 2, meditation leads us to be delighted in the word. And as we delight ourselves in the word, we are inclined to worship God more and more. And now we are seeing where meditation helps us to better apply the word of God to our lives. And here Joshua in chapter 1 and verse 8 in speaking to the people said, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do. Notice now what it is saying. The word shall not depart from your mouth. So not only must you read the word, but you must use your mouth as a part of applying the word. Don't let the word depart out of your mouth. Now, most folks don't know that in the olden days when folks read and meditate on the word, they, when they read the word, the word, they had the scripture in their hands and it was as if they were mumbling, as if they were chanting and they had the scroll open and they were bowing and they were reading uh, and going through and it was not just reading in terms of quiet reading. There was time for that. They also did that. But there was a practice. It was a part of re the reading of the law <clears throat> where they had to literally speak, read the word audibly. So reading, where we just read in our minds, is one part of reading the word. But there is another part of reading the word where we have to open our mouth and let the word of God flow over our mouth. So when we read, uh, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Oh my God. So we are reading, but we are reading aloud. I want the saints of God to practice to read aloud. And just like Joshua indicated to the people that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. It is literal. Don't be afraid when we are reading to open our mouths and, and read, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I literally ask for saints of God in the project um, that we are doing, in, in this little procedure where we are going through the book of Psalms, I ask us to stand up and I ask us to read it. Yes, you can read quietly, but I'm asking us also to read it and let the word come out of our mouth. There is something, I can't explain it, but there is something about reading the word aloud. There is something about letting it come forth from our mouth. It is that other part of the two-edged sword, two-mouthed sword, the mouth of God and the mouth of man. And we must practice to let that word come out of our mouth. 
And as we read, we can read quietly, but we must also read, and we must read and let the words come out of our mouth. There's a little principle there, and I encourage the saints of God to do it and confess, speak the word. It is so very, very, very important. And so I took the time out to go through those so that the principle of meditating on God's words, God's word will be clear to us and we will understand that it is something that we must all do because as we meditate, the words start to form inside of us and the words start to become one with us. We read it and we speak it and then we start to meditate and think on it and so we are being drawn to him in worship, we are being drawn to him in being better able to, to, to do the things in the word. We are being drawn to him uh, based on what we said earlier on in terms of our focus. And as we become more focused, as we are able to live and do the things that is required of us, as we are in the process of <clears throat> and be, become more able to worship, and meditation allows for all of these things to happen, then the word of God starts to become one with us as individuals. And that is so very important. That is where I want, and the point where I want the saints, all of us to be, when the word of God is one with our being, our spirit, our soul, yes, our mind, everything, it is just one so that when we open our mouth and start to speak the word and, and start to apply the word just like Jesus did when he was being tempted. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. He, he, he verbalized what he had inside. It was a part of him. And every situation that confronted him in terms of his temptation. For us, it's not just temptation, but our circumstances, our situations, the things that we come up against and come upon us, we must have. And there is a word for every one of the situations and the circumstances in life. But we must have the word dwelling in us richly. We must have the word being one with us so that when it is time to bring it up and to use it, it will have the potency, it will have the power to bring about the change and to push Satan so that he's pulled back and have to take his corner for a season. But the word must dwell in us. So when that is happening, we see where God's word begins to work inside of us and it cuts through the muck and the mire of your mind and your emotion. Many of us, our minds are mucky because of all the things that we have allowed people to throw into our minds when they come to murmur and to backbite and we assimilate it and we embrace it and our minds have become warped and all kinds of things. Sometimes it is not only the things that people are pollute our minds with by ter in terms of what they tell you about others and tell you about this and backbite and tear down. Sometimes it is because of the very things that we read. Sometimes it is because of the very things that we watch and that we listen or we give attention to. And so for many saints, you're in the church, but your mind is at a place where it is mucky and messy and full of grime. But as we read and meditate on the word and start to allow the word to marinate our being, our spirits, our system, it starts to become one with us and God starts to use the word to cut out some things so that our minds can become clear and clean channels. He then start to use the word to address our emotions. Some of us are constantly crying. Some of us are constantly sad. Some, some saints are constantly in a state of depression. No child of God should be constantly depressed. I am not saying it don't happen. It happens. But why? Because we allow ourselves to be manhandled by the enemy. Why? Because we don't have the word of God dwelling in us richly as it ought to dwell. 
And so we are at a disadvantage. And emotionally, we are weak and many are at the point where they are distressed and at the stage. Some Christians born again, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, are at stages of depression where they are now suicidal. It can happen. And I therefore challenge every child of God. We are going through this thing together and we are going to make it together. But it starts with reading the word of God. And I want us to read. And I want us to get into the habit of meditating. And then allow the word to saturate our being. Become one with us. And once that starts to happen, and it can happen, and it will happen, and it is what happens in the lives of those that are overcoming Christians, they learn the art of reading and studying and meditating the, on the words of Almighty God. And so, as, we, as the word becomes one with us and cut through the muck and the mire of our mind and our emotion and goes straight to the heart of whatever is there, we start thereafter to see ourselves being lifted and being positioned. We start to see ourselves feeling, feel ourselves uh, being stronger and we start to see life differently. Our emotions are no longer under the stranglehold of Satan, where we are thinking about killing ourselves and all of that. But we are seeing life that although it is rough, it can be enjoyable in God. This is what the word does. It divides between the soul and the spirit to discern the innermost thoughts. The innermost attitudes, the innermost desires, the innermost motives. That there's something about the we can, as we say here, we could figuratively say that the word of God has eyes. Why do we say that? The word of God has eyes. It sees what the human eyes cannot see. It knows what no human knows. Once received into the heart, the word of God immediately begins working to renovate those areas of the mind, those areas of the will, those areas of our emotions that are off and are wrong. Many saints are going through some things right now and they believe and they're right because they have it that the enemy is m messing them up the enemy satan have me and it is true but it is because we allow it because instead of using the sword of the spirit that we have which is the word of god we are using our hands we are using our strong will. Our strong will is no match for the adversary. We can't use our weapons. The weapons of our warfare are carnal. We have to use the weapon that God gave us. And you might not like the weapon, but God knows that that's the weapon for the enemy that you and I have. So we have to use the word. Brothers and sisters, ignoring the word of God will allow, follow this now, ignoring the word of God will allow all the patterns of wrong thinking and bondages from our past to continue exerting authority over us. On the other hand, meditating on the word releases the dividing and discerning work of the word inside of us. Brothers and sisters, I am simply saying, if we want to break 
strongholds in terms of thinking. If we want to break bondages from our past, and I, I make the point that after 10 years, some folks can still be in bondage from things of the past, even though at the time when you got salvation, you got the genuine thing. Ten years later, the past could, can easily come back and have people under bondage. There are those who used to drink that know ten years into your salvation, you are feeling and having an appetite for smearing of ice again. And for Bailey's rum cream again. After so long in this salvation. How can that be? It can happen if we ignore the word of God. The old patterns come back. The wrong thinking come back. The old bandages come back. Smoking. You know people hide and smoke cigarettes. Saints go off to the hills away from everybody so that they can do it quietly and hide and take a draw of weed. They go to places where no one else will see them and drink the bondage we have allowed to come back upon us and we therefore ignore the word of God to our peril. But like I said, if we learn to read and meditate on the word of God, that word has the power inside of it to release things that will break the back of these bondages and these patterns that are wrong. And it is therefore important that we literally embrace the word. When we willfully take the word of God into our lives and allow it to do it's supernatural work in us. The word acts like a divine blade slicing right to the heart of the matter. And that is very, very important. Now, I want to, I want to allow us to be clear on a particular matter. Let's go back to the slide before. I want, us, I want to allow us to be clear on a particular matter. When the word has done this extra ordinary work in us. We are inwardly changed. Yes, we are inwardly changed. We then become filled with faith when we allow the word of God to work in our lives. Most saints simply pray a prayer and say, Lord, evermore increase my faith. They simply just pray and say, Lord, increase my faith. But there is something that most Christians are unaware of. And I want to take this opportunity, saints of God, to bring a little clarity. Very simple point, but so crucial. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But when we allow the word of God to work in our lives, when we read when we meditate on, yes, when we apply the word, something is literally happening that many folks don't realize. We might say we don't have faith. 
But listen to me. God has given to every one of us a certain measure. So at least we have the minimum that we needed to have to get the Holy Ghost. All of us have faith. But our faith can grow so that we can achieve and accomplish major things under God. What can we do to allow our faith to grow? We talk about a brother, a pastor, a bishop, a pastor, a, 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 a teacher as a mighty man, a mighty woman of faith. And it is just that God has endowed them with that. But we are not even talking here about a gift that a man may have or the gift of faith. No, we are talking about faith that can grow in all of us who are called Christians. And this can happen when we decide to take up the book, to get into the word, to read the word, to appreciate the word, to meditate on the word, and to live the word. Our faith will grow. And that is Bible. That is word. Why? Because it is said in the book. And Romans 10 and verse 17 makes a simple point. And it is a fact. But we just overlook it. And we need to stop overlooking the simple but powerful things that are contained in the word. And it says, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So whether it is the word that we hear with our physical ears when somebody talks to us through teaching or preaching from the word are the things that we hear when we ourselves get in the word of God. We are seeing that faith comes ultimately by the word of God. And I challenge any one of our saints, I dare any one of us to get in the word and to read what happened in the book of Exodus and how God delivered Israel and opened the Red Sea. I challenge us to read those things and see if they don't build our faith. Because once we start to read and meditate on the word, we are going to see that the God of Exodus, Exodus is the God of the New Testament. And we are going to see that although dispensations may change, God never changes. And the word declares that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. When these things start to come alive in our lives, in our hearts, saints of God, we are going to recognize that the powerful God of Exodus, the powerful God of of the first and second kings and the first and second Samuel and the first and second chronicles that did those mighty things and we saw ravens taking bread and meat to the man of God day and evening morning and evening we are seeing how God works the word is going to become alive in our system and it is going to become one with us and we are going to be in a position to believe God and to see him doing great and marvelous things in our lives and in the lives of others. And so the faith of the saints is going to rise, is going to get strong, and we then will be in a position to believe God for ourselves for great and mighty and manifold things. And it only take, takes, brothers and sisters, the word. Faith is going to come when we hear. And we will only hear. And it's not anything that we hear, but we are, it's the things that we hear that comes from the word of God. This is the source from which the teachers pull. 
This, the word of God, is the source from which the preachers pull. And it is the word that you hear that comes from this source, the word, the book, the Bible, that is going to work inside of us and cause our faith to grow. Those that fail to obey God, those that fail to believe God, it is because there is an absence of the word. And that absence of the word is going to cause our faith to remain weak. And we are not going to be in a position to believe God for anything. And I therefore again use the opportunity, having said what I just said, get into the word and let's build our faith. Very important. Very, 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 very important. And I, 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 I challenge us to, 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 to do that. So we are going forward. So, have the word dwelling richly inside of us and also speak the word. This is the essence of the two-edged or the two-mouthed sword. Very, very, very important. Now, I have said quite a bit. Yes, I have said quite a bit just in the last few moments. And I would no want to take us to a very important part of our walking with God. That is our hearing from God. There are those who because they want to hear from the Lord there are those who, because they want to hear from the Lord, um, do some things as it relates to God's, God talking with them, God re having relationship with them one way or the other. There are those who... indicate that they're going to take some time off. Go off to the hills for a three days and they're not going to stop until God speak to them. That can happen, but I'm going to put that in context because I want us to be clear, because there is a mistaken notion that folks have that you can just decide that this is it. I am going to know just, you know, I can't take a particular thing anymore. We haven't really been walking with God. We have just been doing our own thing. But I've decided that as of this moment, I am going to serve God. And I want him to give me some direction as to how and what I must do. I want God to talk to me. And we go off and God has to talk to me in those three days that I go up to the top of Red Hills or the top of Blue Mountain and we carry our blankets and we seek his face. And many people are disappointed because they spent days, no light, Nothing. 
themselves and God alone. And the three days and nights come and pass. No word from God. They said, God, I want you to come before me in the same way that you came before Moses and in the face-to-face -face manner that you spoke with Moses. God, speak to me. And it doesn't happen. And folks sometimes become discouraged because God didn't speak to them without understanding the relationship that God had with Moses that was consistent, that was always there, the faithfulness of Moses. And even though Moses was a man and made his mistakes, he did his best to consistently walk with God, to consistently be in communion with God, so that when Moses made request of God, show me your glory, God even went as far as to do it. But here comes a man who was not in the word. Here comes a woman who don't even like to open the Bible. They claim I don't like certain things, and one of the things I don't like is to read. But if we are going to be children of God, wanting the attention of Almighty God to the point where we want God to talk to us, I am submitting, brothers and sisters, that that does not come without certain types of sacrifices being made. And I'm not talking about sacrifice as it relates to killing animals. I'm talking about sacrifice as it relates to getting into the word, to surrendering ourselves in prayer. That's what I'm talking about. And so, for the child of God who is given the word and who has the word, I am going to share with us and use this word to indicate how to hear from God. Folks are saying, no, I don't know. God hasn't spoken to me in a long time. I know the, this is the word of God, so I'm going to use this to say God speak to me, and we can. But I'm going to share some things with us. It's very important. But I want for those folks who love to go around to say God spoke to me and told me this, and God spoke to me and told me that, let me tell you, if you are not a child of God, a Christian person that loves the word and you are constantly in the word and you are not just in the word in terms of reading, but you are in the word in terms of, yes, reading and studying and meditating on the word, yes, and living the word. If you are not into that, then let me burst your bubbles. And let us understand that nobody willy dilly, do a little bit no one, a little bit then, and a little here, and a little there, and I read it today, and next month I read again, or next week I read again. You are not the person that God is going to be using as a vehicle for anybody else, not even for yourself. Because he's not going to be talking to you. Nobody that has a warped, non-existent relationship or fellowship with God is going to find that God have a face-to-face -face chat with them like what he had with Moses or any of the others from back there or any in the New Testament as he had with the Apostle Paul or with Peter with the kind of revelations that he gave to Paul or with the visions that he gave to Peter and all the others that he would have related himself to. God speak to men and he spoke to those that were there in Old Testament time. He spoke to those that were back 
in the early New Testament time, he speaks to us today still. Through his words, yes, even through dreams and revelations that he will give, but invariably, everything in terms of the word of God comes right back to this book, the Bible. If you ever believe that God will give you a word that is different from what is in the book, you would be sadly mistaken. Nothing in the book can change again. You won't get another Bible and hear Apostle Paul 2 coming and Apostle 2 saying, Hello, there has been some amendments to the book. That's not going to happen. This is it. And there's no changing to change again. Not going to happen. And if God in this book say, Love, no other book is going to come from heaven. That's it. All right, we have made an amendment. You can, from them do your arm, don't love them. From they do this or they speak evil of you, don't love them. Because they are wicked to have done that. It's not in the book now. Don't wait for it to come. This book will not change. And so if we are going to learn and put ourselves in a position to learn to hear from God, we have better start to learn to get into this book. And so I'm going to ask us to join me again on the screen because I want to just, having said what I just said, it's not about going up into the hills for, for seven days and 14 days and God now talking to us into our ears some things that he has already said and have given us in the book. I'm going to show us how. And it is not only limited to this, but even if God gives us dreams and revelation, God is not going to give you a dream to get up and go down to the sister house and turn this way and swing your hand and box her down. I had a joke of a sister that went on. I mean, it, it, is, it was a joke, you know. She didn't say it as a joke, but it was a joke to me because she was on three days fasting about a particular matter. And having done three days of fasting, she couldn't believe what the Lord told her. And so as the person that she went on the fasting about came in, she said she swung as far as she could go to the side. And when she come around with force and power and hit the person across the jaw, the person knocked out. And then the person got up after that and moved on. And that was the end of the matter. I said that in parables. But it's a factual thing I'm telling you. I left out some parts. But the bottom line is, having gone on three days, God told her to box down the person. And she did that. And felt good. Well, can I share with you, saints of God, don't bother, go do that. God never tell this sister nothing. She waste her three days when she go fast. Waste it. And the box, she box on the person. She put herself in a place that is opposed to the word of God. So she was disobedient to the word and she waste three days and nights. And I submit to you. Don't go around, go do some things which your mind tell you to do and which your spirit tell you to do, which don't have no word inside. When you don't have the word and you know that, you know, because some of us know, why we just fool of us? We know we're not praying. We know we're not fasting. We know we're not in the word. We know. But we come up and say, thus said the Lord. Stop it. The Lord never tell you nothing. You're not in the word. And if you're not in the word, you don't come with that. I don't want to discourage anybody, but I just want to juke the bubble and let out some of the air 
so that all of us can start to build again. Yes? And start with the foundation and build up ourselves in the word. And so join me on this, on this slide uh, at this time as we just quickly run through um, hearing from God. You know, we spoke about the Rima word. The Rima, that word you need from God today for a particular situation, for a particular thing. Brothers and sisters, did you know that many times God would use his spirit to quicken a word that is already inside of us, a word that we already know, a word right from the book, and then he will then pull from that and use it to present before us so that we can deal with a particular situation that literally confronts us at a particular time. Brothers and sisters, did you know that God can use the very book, the Bible that you and I read, and by his spirit quicken a particular verse, a section of a book, and use it to tell you, turn and go this way? Did you know that God can literally and does that even today? To whisper in our spirit and tell us right from the book to go in a particular direction. God can God a scripture right in the Bible that says, get up and go. When God inquired, when David, sorry, inquired of Almighty God, should I pursue? And God answered David and said, pursue. Did you know that God can use that same scripture and apply it to a situation in your life today and you don't know if you should apply for the job because you don't have the qualification and you see the thing and something in your spirit telling you but you know you don't have it and therefore, therefore you don't apply. But then you go to prayer. And he said, God, I see the thing, you know, and I want to pursue the thing, and, but I don't have the qualification. I have a little bit of experience, but I don't have this and I don't have that. And God, I just don't know what else to do. There are some other things that I'm seeing and I'm just not getting the push, but I'm getting a push for this little thing. God, what must I do? And sometimes you don't even have to turn to the Bible. God speaks right into your spirit. And you hear the word pursue and he just gives you an opening right in your mind when David approached him to go after those who did and God answered David and said go pursue and he drops that in your spirit that's what is called a rhema word and you get up and you apply for the job and without the qualification all of a sudden you get the response days or weeks later Come for an interview. And before you know it, you, work, you go for the interview. And you get the job. And you, you got the job. And you only acted because a word fell into your spirit that says, go. And you went. And it was the word of Almighty God. A rima word. God still does that. <clears throat> and I want to encourage. And I want to challenge God's people. The saints of God. I want us all to know that God still speaks to men. He speaks into our minds. He speaks into our hearts. He speaks straight from the Bible. We can turn our Bibles to verses where God directs our fingers. And he speaks to us. And that still happens. And we can then say, I heard from the Lord. Or we can go to a saint or an unsaved and say, Hear the word of the Lord. It still happens. But notice saints of God. That that Rima word hinges entirely. On the presence. Or the absence. Of the written word of God. In your life. If the word of God. The written word. The Bible, the things that are contained in it, 
the different episodes that God gave us from Genesis right over to Revelation. We have a reservoir that can be poured into our system. And when the word is in our system and dwelling there richly, God has enough to use his spirit to pull from and to quicken and to use for a particular situation, to use in a particular circumstance, to use to guide us, to tell us to go or to stay. And he does that still today. But that Rima word hinges entirely on how we have or don't have the word of God in our lives. Brothers and sisters, this is telling us that we need to be reading and to be studying and to be meditating on and to be applying the word because when we have the word richly in us, we are allowing God by the Holy Ghost to pull <clears throat> as he sees fit so that he can apply his word to situations. If we know that we are not in the word, if we know that we are not students of the word, if we know that we are not reading and meditating and studying the word, be careful how we decide that we are going to just open the Bible and put our finger on a scripture and say, the Lord said this to me. Because the Lord can do that. The Lord can do that. And we need to understand. The Lord can do that. Yes. And I have proven that in my own life. I have proven that on numerous occasions in my own life as a Christian. And there were, there were times, yes, there were times when I slacked off. Of course, there were times and days would have gone by when I didn't read the word. And I'm not going to let you feel that it is only you alone that it happened to. It happened to me. There were times when I didn't read the word as I should. There were times when days had passed and I w was not in the word as I should have. But then I knew that it was wrong and I, I was guilty and I, God placed the burden of guilt on me. And then I knew that I had to get into the word. And I knew that after I got in the word and I loved the word and I read and I was in the word. And situations confronted me. And when my back was against the wall on many occasions, I had to go to this book. And I had to touch base with God. And I had to talk to the Lord and say, I need a word. No, God, how should I do it? And this book, in the wee hours of the night, when the light was off and the place was dark, and I would open and say, God, you have to talk to me, please. And when I put my hand there, the thing that was bothering me, and when I turned the light on in the 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, and opened to where my hands were, God Almighty, the word was spot on. To the point where sometimes I had to close the book. Quick! Because of how frightened I was. I know and I'm telling us that God still used this word, the book, and speak into our minds, in our system, and address matters. And there's nothing that can happen at work. There's nothing that can happen at school. There is nothing that can happen in our businesses that this word of God don't have an answer for. A situation, a circumstance is in the Bible that God can pull and present to you and use the Holy Ghost to quicken your spirit and you can get up and walk in the power of that word and overcome any challenging situation in this life. And that will happen only to the extent that we allow ourselves to be filled with the word. It is important, brothers and sisters, that we get in the word. If we know 
that we are not in the word and we're not reading and we're not studying and we're not doing nothing and we're just a regular Christian that say, yes, I have been baptized and filled and I did that 10 years ago. And, but, but, you know, I, as it comes, it, it is, I read the Bible when I get the chance, you know, I pray when I get the chance and, and a situation confronts you in life. And you run and open and say, God, God, talk to me now when you open. Let's not fool ourselves. It's not going to happen like that. And if you choose to do that, knowing that you are not and have not been in the word, you might just open that Bible and put your finger at a scripture. And when you look at that scripture, it told you that like Judas, Judas hanged himself. And you turn to another one. And it says, go and do likewise. That's the word. That's, that's word. You're in the word. We can meet up on so many things if we know that we are not students of the word. Careful. The person that I heard saying that went on to say, if you, if you then turn again, you might just meet upon another scripture that says, whatsoever you do, do it, do it quickly. So Judas hung himself. Do likewise. And whatsoever you do it, do it quickly. All in the word. So you're going to go hang yourself? If you know that you're not in the word, and I think, I, I don't remember which, which minister, but I, saw, I, I, I either read it or heard it. And that's not um, original from me, but it was so true. So true. And if we know that we are not in the word, be very careful. We do have no recourse. And all of us as Christian people are going to come upon things, and we're going to have challenges, and we're going to have things coming into our minds, and the enemy is going to be beating at our doors. What do we do if we are not? In the word, we have no protection. We have nothing to use to defend ourselves. We are at the mercy of Satan. I therefore say again, get in the word. And we have started together with the book of the Psalms. We're going to, get, we're going to do something. We're going to mash down some territory. We're going to take over some grounds. And I encourage you everyone Let, let's quickly get back to the slides because i'm going to just wrap this up now so that we can be clear in our minds we can be clear in our minds as we try to understand the principle in hearing from god so based on what i've said summing that up you will receive the rima word that you need from god because you have the written word of God at your disposal. It's in your system for those who have been reading and over time. And, uh, and we don't have to sit and read 10 chapters every day. No. Brothers and sisters, I believe in consistency. And even if it is a little bit at the start, and we do a little if we do one chapter a day, if we do half a chapter a day, for example, it means that in 30 days, we would do either 15 chapters or 30 chapters. And it don't have to be 30 chapters from one book. It can be 30 chapters from a number of books that has meaning to us. But the point I'm making is, if we do but one chapter a day, and we do it every day, at the end of the year, brothers and sisters, and then not only just read it, but find a little time to sit back and meditate on it. And then at another point, it might not be every day, because we're not going to get the chance to study every day. But let us say we study something from the book. And we tell ourselves every two weeks 
We're going to study something from the Bible. Like every month, even that. You know what happens if every month, we, let us say we're going to study about the blood. And we say we're going to take this month and we study something. And we get some information and it, it starts seeping into our system. And we see the importance of the blood and the efficacy of the blood and then the power of the blood. And then we learn this about the blood and it's in our system. And next month we study about prayer and then we see all the different elements of prayer and we know about interceding and we know about all the things of prayer and then next month we study about something else you know in 12 months we know quite a bit and then multiply that by another 12 months so that after a while we are reading consistently and regularly we are studying regularly even though it's once a month it adds up brothers and sisters, and we put ourselves in a position to have the word seeping into our system and becoming one with us, and God will then be able, from the word that is residing in our system, to minister to us in different ways, but it comes from the word that was, is at and inside of us, and God can use to minister to different areas and aspects of our life. Never forget, God speaks through his word. And if his word is within us, yes, we are going to find that God use it and use that spirit of his, the Holy Ghost, and connects it with situations in our lives. And we will be powerfully endowed to deal with, to go through, to overcome, and to walk on higher ground because God literally speaks to us. So it doesn't matter what problems we are facing. The Spirit of God will provide us with the exact word that we need for the, that or any situation for that matter. This is how God does his thing. And I want us to understand that. I want us to be clear on that. I want us to know God works in this particular way. Now, the Rima word is going to come directly up. Out of the word you have been studying, meditating on, yes, praying over. Yeah, God is going to rise up and talk to us out of all of those things that we have been reading and studying and getting into. And it is important that we understand that. Psalm 119 and verse 30, just a little part of it I, I, I have put there. The entrance of thy words giveth light. The entrance of thy words giveth light. And I want us to also note that in Isaiah chapter number 8 and verse 20, it says this, if they speak not, According to his word, it is because there is no light in them. What is being said in these verses is simply this. That when people do not have the word of God, they have no light and they sit in darkness. They have no light and they sit in darkness. Why? Because it is the entrance of God's word that gives light. There are Christian people today, right now, that come to church every day, that at this moment sit in a dark place. Why? Because it is the entrance of the word of God that gives light. 
and they just do not have the word of God being shown in their hearts on a continuous, continual basis. There are Christians right now who have not even looked at the word of God for the last one month. But we are Christians. We are Christians. We have not looked at the word of Almighty God for the last months, month and a half, two months, and we are Christians, something is radically wrong. We are in darkness. We are in darkness. I would want to ask that if you are serious in serving God, if you are serious about living for the Lord, I want to encourage you to tell you to tell us that we must be walking in the word. That is the essence of the series that we have been going through. The essence is the absence of the word. If we are not in the word, if we are not constantly reading the word, we are in a dark place place as Christian and you can ask me the question how can you be a Christian or can you be a Christian and be in a dark place yes in fact there are those who are Christians and I, I use the word in a kind of with a semicolon or with a quotation that are Christians that will actually end up in hell Christians because you once received the salvation experience Christians, yes, because once you were walking according to the word. But I dare say that there are many who feel that they are Christians that will not make it in the rapture when it comes. That is how serious. Look, this thing about Christianity that people have made it to become this kind of nonsensical thing. All you've got to do is to Jesus come into my heart and that's the end of it. Live any way, do anything. Blah, blah, blah. But just, just say this prayer and you're on your way to heaven. That's a lie. That's a lie. And I have seen where apostolic believers are gravitating to this lie. That you can live anyway, do anything. Just look back at the fact and remember you had given your heart to Jesus then. And the fact that you did that, it doesn't matter what you do now. You don't have to read the word. You don't have to live in the word. You can do anything. But you gave your life to him one day, ten years ago. You are on your way to heaven. You are not going to heaven. It's a lie. And I can tell anybody that treat and i'm not going to join with those folks that give folks the wrong impression that you can live anyhow and still make it into god's heaven you're not going to make it we are not going to make it if we are not in the word because it is the word that gives us direction and if we are directionless and and it is the word that gives light and if we are without light we will have a problem. We must be in the word. We must be walking in the word. Without the word, we don't know that we must not be engaged in hatred and biting and malice and strife and wrath and variance. Without the word, we don't know. We won't realize. And the Bible said that those who engage in these things will have their part in the lake of fire because the word puts it this way they have no part in the kingdom of God 
And if you don't have no part in the kingdom of God, then the only other place that is left for you to go is hell. There is no middle ground. That's Bible. And because we are not in the world, we don't know. And we start to take the, 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 the words of men. Not realizing that the words of men, we must be careful of them. Men tell you that you can live any way, join any crowd, go to parties and go to sessions and be engaged with the things of the world and love the, 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 the things of this world. When the Bible says, love not the world, preachers tell you so nothing is wrong with certain things in the world because you are a human and God knows that you have your frailties and your weakness. So you can engage, just give your heart to him and give him his time. But that's a lie from hell. The word of God says, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life. Is not of the father. But is of the world. Don't love the world. Don't make no preacher tell us that nothing go wrong with the world. Something is wrong with the world. Something is wrong with the things that are of the world. Something is wrong with the fashion of the world. <clears throat> Something is wrong with the world system. Something is wrong with being engaged with certain things. Certain organizations. Something is wrong with certain brotherhoods, certain, something is wrong. And the Bible tells us that. So don't get too accustomed and acclimatized. You don't know that Satan is behind the scene doing what he's doing to mess up this world system because he's the God of this world. And it is not because God is not in charge. God is fully in charge. But God has allowed him to do what he is doing because it is playing right into the hand of Almighty God. You and I can't change what is happening. Can I invite us to look over to the United States and see what is happening? And see the rioting and the burning and the destruction. And we might say, oh my God, look what is happening. Let us go do this. What are you going to do? We can only pray. But what are we going to pray for? Because the Bible tells us that some things, and when the Bible tells us, you know, prayer can't, if the Bible says the end of days, the mark of the beast will come, and nation shall rise against nation, you, why are you going to waste your time praying that no mark don't come? Stop wasting your prayers. Pray for people. The mark will come. The mark is going to come. And a whole host of things is going to come upon this world. And this, the, the, the systems of this world is going to come under pressure. Some people praying, no, God, just, just mess it up. Mash up the works of those that are causing this thing. Mash up the work of the globalists and the elitists. And mash them down. And no, stop wasting your prayer. Let us pray for the saints. Let us pray that God guide us and ready us because the Bible already tells us that that is going to happen. Yes, and it cannot change. Bible, word. But there are some folks who love this world and love this system that instead of praying for God to ready us and prepare us for the rapture, and pray and say, Lord Jesus, those that are unsaved, God, keep them. Uh, sorry, God, save them. And for those that are saved, say, God, keep them and keep us. Some sin, so love, and I use the word sin, so love this world system. So that them can splash off at beach. And they can pull off everywhere. And they can go to the sessions and drink a Bailey's, rum, cream, hide. You would be surprised that some child and children of God are praying for the maintenance of the world system that is here. 
I know it is rough and it is hard and it is causing distress, but it is what the Bible said was going to happen. But if we don't know the word, we'll get fooled and we'll get sucked in. Don't get sucked in. This world system is going down. And we and I don't even know if Almighty God is now casting judgment in some places. Because when we look at what some people have brought upon this world, God said a man and a woman must get together in marriage. And this world system has now made it into such that they are saying a man and a man. And if you dare oppose them, you are in trouble. This is where we are. So you allow God to do what he is doing or allow what is happening. But pray for your family. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray that the word of God dwell in us richly as saints so that God can have his way with us and speak to us and advance us. And let's not get acclimatized and attached, yes, to this world system. Oh, give me the word. Let the word dwell in me richly. Let the word sweep over my soul. Let the word of Almighty God become one with me. And let me confess or speak into the situations and the circumstances. When I see rioting and destruction, I can only pull from the word. Ask God to be the guide. But at the same time, pray for the people who don't even know what is happening. And ask for mercy upon those that are unsaved that they can be saved. Because this world is not getting any better. Those that are behind the scenes pulling the strings are going to be pulling harder than ever. So those that love this world, watch out for November in the United States of America, the biggest economy of the world. Because if America sneezes, you know, everybody else catch cold. And there are others with antidotes that are coming. Oh gosh, this thing, we are, we are at a critical juncture, saints of God. Now is the time to detach ourselves. Let go of the world system. And if you are into something and it looks like it tie up into the world system so much that your eyes are clouded and you can't focus on the word and you can't get into God in the way that you should be, let go. Let go. Let go. And let God. A believer's ability to walk in this kind of supernatural direction and revelation is determined by how much word he has inside of him. I encourage you, brothers and sisters, I encourage you, brothers and sisters, to see the importance of the word. I encourage you, saints of the Most High God, to recognize that God honors his, his word above his very name. God knows the power of words. The very thing that you name, the words that you use, the things that you say. God talks about Life and death being in the power of the tongue, the things that we say. But then we have to be careful because just imagine now that we can take up the book and read and start to speak the word from our mouth. A part of reading is talking as we see in the experience of those of old. They would read, but when they read, they read aloud. And sometimes those men stand up for hours with the scroll in their hand, hand, just reading, just reading. And there is something about the word. It has a way that it can just encapsulate you and tie like it's tying something about you. I challenge any saint of God to get into some scriptures and just stand up for, 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 for minutes and let the minutes turn to an hour and just read the word. And not just read it in your mind, you know. Because sometimes we do that and other times we read aloud. And you just like you're meditating and chanting the word and let it come from your spirit and from your being. 
and let it saturate and find a place inside of us. I challenge us. The word is powerful. The word is great. The word is crucial because it is the entrance of the word of God that gives light. And so I challenge all of us to walk in the word. Our lives Eternity depends on it. The Lord bless you and bless you real good. I believe we would have come to the end. So when we get back next week, I'm just going to do a review and hand out via the media the notes on the topic, walking in the word. I exhort and implore every saint, please, the challenge that we have thrown out, what it is that we are doing together, in ter and I said it at the beginning, I'm saying it again because it is so important. I ask us, let us read together. I, last night I was reading and all of us stood going through, I believe it was Psalm 9, and I felt the connection with many other saints in Jamaica, in the different parishes. I literally felt like we were the children of Israel gearing up to come out of Egypt's bondage and make the journey to Canaan. I felt that in the spirit as I read last night. I, I, I am sorry that it is only one chapter we are doing together, reading together, but it is a start. And at another point, sometimes we might do two so that we can just stand up and just read. It feels good. There is a connection. And there are those that who were not reading before that are reading now. After a while, we are going to delight ourselves. And so it is going to become a part of us. And this is what we are praying towards. Young people, remember I said before that I'm going to call upon some of you to give me a little synopsis of what Psalm 1 or Psalm 5, or Psalm 9, what it meant to you. I can call upon any one of you, 25 or below. And I want you to read it. And then, based on what we said earlier on, meditate on it. Take a little time out. Go into a quiet place. Think about it deeply. See what it is saying. What is God saying here? And what is it that you might have to do as an individual? Think of it in these ways and meditate on those words and then if it says walk uprightly let us practice yes young people especially to do the right thing because when this start to happen and the word take a hold of you great things are in store god bless you we will meet again god's willing next week as we wrap up by doing a review on walking in the word have a great evening, and the Lord bless you richly in Jesus' name. Father, we bless your great name. Thank you for bringing us to this penultimate point in our study of walking in the word. I pray that every child of God will start to review the things that we have been teaching on over the last couple of weeks. Review and put it together, almighty God, so that every benefit that can be derived from this study will be derived every benefit so that we will learn and understand the importance of reading the word and studying the word and meditating on the word and applying living the word help us almighty god to do it uh, others might give the impression that it is not important but it, it, is, it is everything because you, mighty God, honor your word above your very name. And so we don't want to treat your word lightly. We don't want to trample upon your words, but help us, great God Almighty, to embrace your words and to walk therein and to give due respect and regard to the words of Almighty God. Have your own way. Let your perfect will be done and help us mighty god to walk in your words we give you thanks 
We glorify you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.